Alrighty, what is up, people? Hey, 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 if you're on, give us a... Give us a note to let me know that you're here. Oh, I see some people here, which is always fun. Cool. We're working on this fun thing today. Hey, 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 oh! Uh-oh. I think that makes 40... I think that makes 40 right there. So officially now whoever wins is going to be extra happy. <laughs> He's like I should win, right? Then that's the way that works, right? Um Hey. hey. Um so yeah, so we'll do the giveaway in about 20 minutes it looks like. And um yeah. So no, you didn't you didn't win by being forty. You just made it so that, you know, if you won, then you get it painted and you get both of them. But I'm only painting one. I'm only I'm only painting one. You can pick which one. Um But uh but whoever wins will get both figures and I appreciate your support. So that means a lot. It uh it allows me to do a lot of uh cool stuff on the channel here and just really um you know, continue to help people learn and, and, and do stuff like that. Um, this is just a, a really, I love the movement in this figure. You know, it's, it's just got a lot of character. So this is, um, another figure for that, uh, Asian adventures, um, thing. So they're 3d printable. This guy I printed off a little larger because I, I like the sculpt so much. I kind of want it to be a, um, I want it to be like a, what's the word? Like a showpiece kind of thing. So I don't know if we'll end up taking it quite to that level, but we're going to get pretty dang close to it. So there is some art that goes with it, or concept. He's some sort of historical figure. I need to figure out which one, I suppose. He's like, um, he's some, some Asian historical figure that, uh, when the when the commission was requested, they said and they gave me a picture. Why don't I throw the picture up and that way we can look at color scheme. We're going to be doing the horse part today um, because it's the part that I am least familiar with. Well, I think something just happened. Oh, thank you very much for the subscription. I much appreciate that. If you happen to uh, win, then. Thanks for fo I think somebody followed too. Yep, followed and subscribed. So if you happen to win, you, then you'll get to pick one to paint. And at this point now, the winner gets both. So thank you very much. Um, let me try to find the art for this guy, and then we'll get cracking. We're gonna do we're gonna do the horse part today because I have no earthly idea how to do the horse part. I've never painted a horse, and you know it's like, okay, that's you know. Somebody's like, well, just paint it as a horse. Thanks, Captain. Like, I didn't think of that. Um, horses have a certain sheen, though. You know, that's part of the problem. Uh, trying to find... Here we go. Let me... Just a second. Let me pull... We're going to pull the reference image up for the general image, and then we'll pull a reference image up real quick that we're going to use for the actual horse part. Okay? Also, those, those up on stream... So we can get a look at what we're going to be doing today. So this is kind of like the general concept of the figure that we're going to be working on. Well, I'm glad you caught one too. I'm, it's always great to have people that like I've interacted with on Facebook or something like that that are now like starting to show up on Twitch. Like that just makes me happy, you know? Um, let me go grab my, oh lordy, I think I managed to trick somebody else, didn't I? People are getting tricked left and right. Thank you so much for the subscription, I very, very much appreciate that. Oh, we stream too early? 
What uh, what time? Where are you at? Because for mo- most of the time, I get the exact opposite. Most of the time, people are like, "This is too late for me," and I'm like, "Yeah, I get that." But you know, um, trying to to balance it with with you know, kind of my life and and you know how we're I got kids and you know all that kind of stuff. So. Da-da-da-da-da. All right, I'm going to pull up this horse real quick, and then we'll get cracking on the horse. Just, I had it on uh, my other thing, and I I realized I forgot to save it to use for this. Which would make much more sense. I think we're going to use... I think we're going to do a combination of a couple... But the main colors that we're going to aim for are this guy. Just a second. And then I, if anybody's been talking, I've been missing it. So. Oh, all right. So that's going to be kind of the West Coast 7 a.m. Okay, 7 p.m. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So this is kind of the horsey color that we're going to go for little white I think on the face a little bit but then some black and the yeah I get that yeah for me this is like right after the kids have gone to bed and stuff like that so yeah I get that I right, so this is kind of the generalized color we're going for and he'll have um, black legs and stuff like that and then we're gonna do the the dark blackish mane Okay, so we're going to be working on this figure. Um, so I think what we're going to do is start out. i got to make sure I've got a good concept of where all the horse flesh is. I don't really want to paint anything that's not horse flesh. I don't want to, like, spend time realizing it. So, yeah, I think i got a good idea. So what we'll do is we'll airbrush um, a base coat down of, like, a... Uh, Probably like a mahogany, because I think that's a great start. And at some point, we're going to start bringing in, because the color that we want is very close to like a burnt sienna. Okay? Um, I was talking with James Wapple. He might even be streaming right now, for all I know. I was talking with James Wapple earlier, because he paints tons of horses. I was like, any recommendation for horses? And he's like, well, if you're doing this, try this. If you're doing this, try this. And and um, he recommended burnt sienna uh, for this, and that just that seems like the the way to go, I think. So yeah, du, 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 du. okay. Um, he, I just read. He just messaged me more advice, so that was good. Um, okay, dokie. So let's go ahead and let's get some mahogany down. And we'll airbrush this guy on there, and then we'll see what we how we want to step that up. I think we're going to step up um, with kind of golden colors, because if we look... So I think, let me, let me grab the colors. So I think we're going to start out mahogany here, and then move up to... That's yellow ochre. That's got a little bit of green in it, so we don't want that. Um, golden brown. And so we're going to do that, and then what we'll probably do is use um, Burnt Sienna as a filter over it afterwards, so real thinned out to kind of um, smooth things out. We'll use some of our trusty smush brushes here, which are like fancy makeup brushes. They're, they're just a little bit softer, and I feel like they wear a little bit better, like they don't get crusty as much um, as makeup brushes. So we'll do that and that. Um, to give it a little bit of texture. Um, and then when we want to hit some of the darker shadows, we'll take some of our um, burnt umber and kind of darken that up. And then towards his um, the blacker parts, we'll bust out maybe a little bit of black ink mixed in with the burnt umber. So that's kind of the plan of attack, I think. We'll have to see if it actually ends up that way. But that is the plan. So, as a, as the military says, though, no, no plan survives contact with the enemy. So, having a plan and executing that plan may not be the same thing here. But at least we can try, right? Alright, so let's, uh, let's grab the airbrush. We're going to do our base coating with uh, the Grex. I'm going to be around 20-ish PSI, probably, 
somewhere in there. I gotta get my gauge mounted where I can see it better. Okay, and then we're gonna be probably about 50-50 on um, thinner and um, thinner and paint, right? So we're doing pro curl paint, airbrushes beautifully. Um, if you have been trying to get pro curl because everybody loves pro curl and it like always, always, always goes out of stock then um check now check in the next couple of days they bought their own bottling machine basically and now they're making pro curl on site which is fantastic so they should have a lot less distribution issues because that was kind of their problem for a long time is everybody wanted their stuff and nobody could get it um so hopefully the days of that are ending it would be nice we're just going to get this good and mixed here. If you're starting out in airbrushing, I recommend you mix in an external container, like a cup, like these cups are great. These cups are great for if you're starting out in airbrushing, because it allows you to really get a feel for how thick and thin the paint should be. Um, eventually, once you kind of um, get a feel for it, then you know you can uh, easily start doing it in the cup but when you're starting out it, it's just a lot easier to do it in something else and pour it in awesome dragon eye ah uh, as part of the studio x was that the is that the mobile studio thing i'm just doing little bitty squirts here little bitty things i might have a little too much thinner in here but that's okay we started off this was brown, this was um, with a red brown primer. We probably actually could have um, just gone over it with the primer again, to be honest with you. So, yeah, Studio X, is that the one with the, is that like the mobile studio where it's got like the brushes hanging, stuff like that? I gotcha. I'm a bit torn on what I think about the brush ha hanging upside down. Like, the science behind that is just not great. Um, it's not going to hurt it, it's just not necessary. Um, but the whole device is really cool. Having that kind of all-in-one is nice. For sure. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Ten minutes away from the giveaway. Somebody remind me when we get um, closer. Otherwise, I will very likely get caught up painting and 100% forget about the giveaway. I don't really want to do that. We're just doing little bitty squirts. When this is a um, um, yeah, if if. Anybody who's on, um, if you type sponsor, I think, then it should show any of the discounts, exclamation point sponsor. It should show any of the discounts that we get, and uh, you get uh, all the Monument products at 5% uh, off, which is great. Um, it might be sponsors. Try sponsors. All this stuff is new. Might be with an S. Let me, let me see. Do, 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 do. I'm trying to add more sponsors. Yeah, sponsors with an S. Okay. Um, I'm trying to add more to... So that uh, I can get you guys some awesome stuff at a discount. Alright, we're just working on building him up. Um, this is a Grex TG3. As far as a trigger airbrush goes, I like it with one exception. It, it's a really picky airbrush as far as cleaning goes. Um, more than my other ones. It just demands to be kept pristine. Um, 
it, it otherwise it clogs really easily compared to like a Badger Patriot. Um, but it's super comfortable to use for a long time. Like if you're going to be airbrushing for, for extended periods, it's super comfortable. And this, um, is, um, water soluble. Um, what's it called? I don't remember. I'll have to look it up, but it's like a plastic that you dip in water and then it becomes pliable. And then as it cools down, it just hardens, right? So it's hardened. But what it does was it, it made the whole thing just conform to my hand like a glove. So I put that on, I got in my position and I squeezed a little bit and the whole thing just formed around my hand. And then it cooled down and it was there. So now the whole thing is just crazy comfortable to use. Um, so we're just doing thin coats here. That's your, when you're doing airbrushing, that's one of the keys, is um, thin coats in general. Even if you're using thicker paint, you don't want to just like hold it down and go to town. It's just not going to work out well. All right. So this is Grex TG3 is what this is. Um, and I like it. It's a good brush. I got no real qualms except the, uh, the, the demand to be clean. We're going to add, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to add just a little bit of our golden brown now in with the mahogany and start lightening it up a little bit. So we're going to kind of do what we normally do, which is we're going to kind of sketch it out with the airbrush. Then we're going to sketch it out with um, some makeup brushes or some rosemary smush brushes to add some texture. And then um, we'll come back over with a glaze at the end. And... Um, Kind of finish it up by glazing it at the end and that should get us texture and color and everything else that we want that's the goal at least we will have to see if that's how it works out won't we Do -do -do. i'm just mixing up some color here in my thing. there we go that's the color i want if you mix too much there's so much red in this mahogany if you mix something with too much white you're going to end up really pink fast and since we're doing the the burnt scene at the end that's not the end of the world it's just probably not what you want so we're just mixing it there we're getting to about that i'm going to add just a little bit more thinner Is my audio okay today? I'm using a different microphone. Um, the other microphone has really great audio. It's just super uncomfortable to use after about an hour. Come on. I'm trying to get rid of this darker color that's in the airbrush. I think we're a little lighter now. Yeah. So we're just going to hit focus on the upper parts. Just focusing on not quite as zenithal, but the idea is here we don't want to cover everything with these lighter parts and it's going to be real subtle and that's fine okay good whoa somebody timed out and somebody evil twin you uh spam in there bud okay that's all set on the bot like i don't know what exactly the parameters were apparently you went all evil though man Right, this is probably a little too subtle here for what we're going to do, so we're going to kick it up a notch here. That's pretty funny. I never even saw anything. I don't know what, what the all caps was. Alright, this is a little bit lighter here. Come on. 
Right, here we go. There we go. And I'm just doing little sprays here. We're not worrying about being super precise here, because we're going to add a lot of our precision with the brush, with the texture brush. We're just trying to sketch in volumes here a little bit. We're going to do some precision here. Yep, it got a clog. That's a... Doo -doo 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 -doo. No worries. I'll just back it out a little bit. Push it through. There we go. If you get a clog, if you just pull your needle back a little bit and then run it at full blast, it'll come out then. Almost every time, unless you just got a major, major clog. So we're just working up. The, the brighter we get, the more precise we're going to have to be, but we're not at the point where we need to really be precise yet. We're just doing little 10% squirts here. Like I said though, this is my first horse, so we'll see. The plan is airbrush, texture brush, and then a glaze on the airbrush. Because we want some texture, because totally smooth things are hella boring. Thank you so- hey Cutthroat Culture, I appreciate the raid. Oh, it's time! Cutthroat Culture, you dropped in right in time for a giveaway. What is up, everybody? If you are, I, I will give everybody here a chance. If you, uh, we'll delay it like five minutes. If you've never been on the Spotted Painter thing, if you go drop a comment on my Facebook page, the link is spotted, facebook.com slash Spotted Painter. If you look for the giveaway on that page, we're giving away two awesome minis. All you gotta do, all you gotta do is, uh, drop a comment on on the post so we'll give you five minutes if you want to go do that but i appreciate the raid we are doing a little bit airbrushing we're working on this guy i gotta apparently there's lots of lots of yeah i may have to ease those up <laughs> I, I will need to uh to do that apparently what is up, everybody? Hey, hey. What's going on, Cutthroat? You around? Did you run off? Did you raid and run? <laughs> Appreciate the follow very much. Very much. So I'm going to, anybody who wants to do the giveaway, we'll wait a couple of minutes. If you want to hop over to the Facebook page and do the giveaway, that's fine. So. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate. What's up, man? Did you have a good night? We're just working on this horse here, this uh, mounted rider with a little airbrush. Thank you so much for the follow. I think my horsey picture is blocking the thing, so we'll move that there. I gotta, I need to, uh, yeah. Maybe I should ease up on my Streamlabs. I don't even know where that's at, man. Let's see, what do we got? Uh, mod tools, caps protection. We'll just turn that off. There we go. That's off. I wonder if that's like instant. All right, I think we're... 
Yeah. Du, 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 du. Alright, I think all my, my crazy protections are now off, I think. We'll see. We tricked him, boys. Yeah, afraid so. Well, there you go. Look at that. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. We're working on this horsey horse. About to hit it with some uh, golden brown. Little bit of little bit of mahogany with a little bit of golden brown. It's going, man. It's going good. You know what? I think I think it's going really well. I uh, joy in being on on Twitch here. It's always nice to have people show up and you know do it. You know when you first start Twitch and you like paint all by yourself and you're like talking to yourself for two hours. Somebody asked me, how do you talk to yourself for two hours? I was like, you believe. You have to believe it's going to get better. Like, that's the only way you survive, like, the Twitch where nobody's on your stream, right? It's like you're talking and nobody's responding. You're like, okay, it'll get better. It'll get better. You just have to believe. Doing a little bit of airbrushing here. All right, we're just going to hit some... Like I said, we're gonna come back in with the with the brush, be a little bit more specific, but we're just trying to get some overall tones here. Yeah, there are there are some. I've seen a few of those before. Um, so a lot of the things that people talk about on Twitch, though usually involves video gaming and a lot of it doesn't make any sense for mini painting but not always okay all right so we're gonna do some of this all right we're gonna come back in with the brush i think it's time to do the the I just imagine I have friends 24-7. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you like talking to people? Okay, so my son, um, he had an imaginary friend for years, but we weren't sure if he was imaginary at first. Oh. There's a ReaperCon session coming up on Twitch Saturday. Cool. Um... Let me turn that off too. I don't care. It's late. Where's that at? There we go. That should be off, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. All right, that should be off too. Say what you want. I don't care. That was all the defaults for all this stuff. I'm a real bastard for chat bubbles. <laughs> oh, lordy. So yeah, my son had this, this, uh, thank you so much for the follow. Yeah, follow. Much appreciated. Um, my son had this, uh, imaginary friend for years and for like six months, we weren't sure if he was real or imaginary because like the detail in which he would describe him was honestly straight up amazing. It was like, wow. What did what did he do today? Oh yeah, and then finally, like he's like, and Aiden turned into a werewolf today, and we're like, oh, oh, he must no, no, Re real kids don't turn into werewolves. All right, so I'm gonna go over. I'm going to what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at how many comments there are. I'm gonna draw a random number from how many comments there are, and then I'm gonna count down that many comments, and we're gonna go pick a winner on our on our thing. So let's go over to Facebook. I don't have it up to where um, uh, it'll show it on here. I just, I, I've got a lot of stuff open, so I don't have that on here. So let's figure out, and then we'll do a random number between that and the number of comments. And then count down. I'm just hoping it's low. I'm hoping the number is low so that I don't have to count to like 287. Right? Because last I looked, there were roughly 300. So it would be super nice if the number was like 
pen. Of course, now if it's 10, somebody's going to be like, cheater. Okay, I have 302 is what I show. Let me refresh one more time. If it's super close to 302, then I'll see if I need to get a more accurate count. If the random number is... Random number between 1 and 302 is... Is, come on, you can do it. 35. All right. All right, 35. <laughs> Shut up, 256. All right, 35. Let me count down 35, and then we'll see. Somebody's getting two really awesome figures. Like, yeah, I was like, I will, because I, I said I'm going to give away one, and then I said, you know, if I get another 40 Twitch subscri subscribers, I'll give away both. And lo and behold, like, I think we hit like 41. So it's like, all right, well, I guess I'm doing that. All right, one, two, three, what, I said 35? 35. All right, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Oh, Scott Longberry, you are 22. 23, 24, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30, 31. 32, 33, 34, 35 is Zachary Donovan. Winner on my list, he is number 35. I don't think it was like the 35th person. It's just however it came up. I'm not going to... It's it's random as random can be at this moment. Winner, if you happen to be watching Mr. Zachary Donovan, you are a winner. I will come back and check out any comments that are being made. And then we will get on with life here. I gotta print these suckers off now. <laughs> if he happens to be a subscriber, I will also be painting one of those models on the stream. We'll just have, have to see if he's a subscriber. Can I change my name to Zachary Donovan? Mm. I'm going to guess no. I, I think that's probably cheating is, is going to be my guess. All right, so we're going to start adding some. All right, man. Appreciate you, you raiding. Much appreciated. Have fun. Go and enjoy the, the good foods and the, the cleaning of the desks. Alrighty, we're gonna. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding some texture, and we're gonna start back on our darks, and with a little bit of lights, and then can you get it done legally? I don't know. See, he shouldn't have told me the evil plan. All he had to do right there was say, "Yes, I'm Zachary Donovan." That's it. Like I don't know. He's painting Cyrix, right? You missed out on an opportunity there, bud. Like, I wouldn't have known. You have been like, yeah, that's totally me. All right, we're just going to start working in. We're going to end up covering a lot of what we did before, but that's okay. Because the goal here is just the layers and layers of stuff here. I think what we're going to do, actually, is move down to our... Or darks here and start putting some of them on. I'm totally Zachary. See, it doesn't work now. You missed out your chance, man. I would have been like, I won't even need to post it. He's here in chat. <laughs> We're just going to work a lot of this crap in here. Just taking our dark mahogany here and working it in places that I know we're gonna have some some shadow and I'm not being real careful because we're gonna be covering most of this anyways. And we wanna kinda stipple it so that we get that texture. Tell you next time I'll be like if anybody's gonna cheat 
they need to cheat now, right? Be like, only, only follow right now if you plan on cheating, right? <laughs> this is probably not the most efficient way to paint a horse. That's okay. We're learning because I've never painted a horse before. And I I want some texture. And as, as viewers who are not new will know, I'm kind of lazy in trying to figure out ways to shortcut different textures and stuff like that so if I can get away with not using a teeny tiny brush for as long as possible that's what I'm gonna do right <laughs> yep I'll just have to remind you to cheat better. <laughs> We're getting there. It'll work out one way or the other. Worst case scenario, if, if I hate the way this looks in the end, I can always just come back in and, and paint it with a, with a normal brush. I just, you know, that's... A lot of work to paint a horse like that. So, we're just trying to stipple in the texture here. We just want to make sure we're getting all of. You know what? I should disable the giveaway timer, right? Where's that at? Timer giveaway is off. Sweet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if you're here for the first time, I'm the Spotted Painter. I paint a lot on Facebook. I've done. Um. You know, studio pieces for a lot of different companies, including um, Reaper, uh, Tomb Guardians. I do a lot of Kickstarters these days, doing the, the studio pieces for them. I think I've, I've got a specialty lately. It's kind of been trying to figure out how to get a decent paint job and not take forever doing it. Right? I like texture. I like texture in ways that makes things look smooth without actually being smooth, right? Because I think that things that are overly smooth are super boring. I like Procrell. I love these Rosemary & Co. smush brushes. Alright, we're going to start working up a little bit here. We're going to take some of our gold and yellow. We're going to mix it in. And I need just a little bit more of that mahogany. Mm -hmm. right, we're going to focus now on a piece like your areas. I think what I might do when we're I'm not worrying about the legs too much because we're going to add the dark kind of boots on the legs and then we're going to add possibly even, I don't know what it's called, but the socks, you know? If somebody knows horse stuff and they want to tell me what that stuff is actually called, that'd be awesome. I just know it as the sock part of a horse. On their feet, they look like they're wearing socks. This is going to look messy until we kind of get towards the end, and then we'll kind of glaze and we'll do some other things, and hopefully, it'll come together. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> if you're watching and you'd like to share some of your work, feel free to and drop a link and you can always discuss anything that gets shared and talk a little bit about what works and what doesn't. I always like helping other artists out if you're, if you're ever interested. Just working on some texture here. Notice I'm stabbing. I'm not being careful. I'm also not rinsing out this brush. Because if it gets super wet, it's really not going to work that well for what we're doing here. At this point, everything's fairly obvious. I think for the next one, we're going to step it up considerably in brightness and really... Really pump some texture on the next one because it's definitely the mid-tone which is where you really want to start adding some texture. That's where you should probably see the most. Black parts on a bay which is what are called points. So black legs, nose, ears, tail, and mane. Alright. Appreciate the information. We're going to be glazing him with some um, burnt sienna, so he's going to end up kind of chestnut colored, is the idea. Like I said, we're, we're not doing a whole lot with the, with the feet, because we're going to end up kind of doing something different down there anyways. And we do want, we need to over highlight on the horse because we're going to do that, a fairly dark glaze, right? So we, we are going to want to make sure that we are a bit brighter than we want to be because it's going to tone it down quite a bit when we throw the, um, what am I saying? The uh, burnt sienna on it. So, the horses do have a sheen, right? So their coat does have a sheen. So we do want to make sure that he does have some actual highlights. If he doesn't have any bright parts, he's going to look like a very, um, what's the word? sick horse I guess right we're just stippling 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 all those black kind of parts that we, that he was just talking about Roy Dwarf no Roy Dwarf is not done because this commission has a shorter timeline I was kind of informed of the differences in the timeline earlier today Roy Dwarf has a timeline of like a month and a half. This guy has a timeline of like a week. <laughs> so Roy Dwarf got put off till this guy is done. But Roy Dwarf isn't going to take hardly any effort. Roy Dwarf is going to be Honestly, one of the easiest things. <laughs> I'm going to... We're going to do like a black mane on this. I hate painting black though. 
Painting black and highlighting black is my least, absolute least favorite thing in the entire world to paint. Maybe white, but I think white's easier. Like, yeah. Alright, we're gonna go straight to our golden. Uh, what's that? Golden brown now? And the, the point here is I need to make sure that these highlights are fairly small. Right? You don't want too much. And then A lot of the face we're not going to have to worry about as much because he'll have the black part there and we'll handle it then. <laughs> I think what we'll do before we... Before we um, do the glaze is we'll probably take a brush and we'll glaze in some darker places. Because right now his contrast overall is really quite low. Right? We're just trying to work in some things here. We might go, we might add a little bit of ivory into this. Not 100% sure. The whole idea is we want some texture. We are painting this, if you're joining us and you have no idea what it is that we're painting, we are painting this figure for an upcoming Kickstarter. We're attempting to find easy ways to do horse stuff because I've never done horse stuff before. I'm a big fan of these kind of Rosemary Co. smush brushes, so we're seeing if we can use that to add some texture and then smooth some things out with an airbrush a little bit. Yeah, we're going to need to go one more layer up because right now if we hit this with the airbrush, we're going to lose like 90% of our of our contrast, right? So we need to go one more. So we'll add some ivory. Um, where's my ivory? Oh, that's not ivory. That's bright ivory. That's too bright. What are you? Are you ivory? You are ivory. Yeah, Roy Dwarf is looking like this right now. So he just got some kind of base coats and shading to just kind of see how how he's but you know this is 20 minutes worth of work here <laughs> how long have we been going we've been going about an hour all right Right, we're going to mix a little bit of, just the tiniest bit of white into our um, golden brown. White's so opaque that it is going, even the littlest bit's going to have quite a, an effect here. And we just need, we need to kick it up in a few places here. Uh, that was just the Roy Dwarf there. I'm assuming that's what you were oh nice in. Yeah, that was just kind of sketching and stuff. I have no idea how much of that is going to end up kind of on the final thing or not. I like these smush brushes because they add in texture, but they also do everything like really light. Like, we don't have to worry about 
um, accidentally hitting like a part and leaving like a just a massive like white spot, right? Like everything is nice and subtle. Right, subtle is good. Subtle is what we want, right? I think when we go to do this lays on this for this guy, we are going to be doing very, very thin layers, I think. Because I get the feeling if we're not careful, we're going to lose a lot of our hard work here. I think we're going to go ahead and add some some straight ivory in a few places. Yeah, because we need to make sure it's appropriate when we go to kick it down. And maybe this won't work. Maybe this whole thing is going to fall apart because never painted a horse and I don't exactly know how I want it to go yet is the problem like I don't have a super clear picture in my mind for some of it right I just know that he needs to be mostly smooth blends but he needs some texture and you know, we need to keep everything nice and natural. We need some, um, we need some highlights to indicate his sheen. I know that. Generally, we want to kind of avoid hard edges. We haven't done anything on his chest. We've been neglecting his chest. That's not good. <laughs> What's everybody working on their own stuff? What What kind of stuff are you guys painting? Okay. Alright. Just a bunch of random horse picks. I don't blame you, man. Alright, I think we're done with doing that. I think what we're going to do now is we're going to glaze in some, some stronger shadows before we go to do... Oh, that's a good idea. I didn't even think about that. That's a good idea. I looked around earlier today and uh, saw some things. So we're going to take some of our transparent burnt umber ink. If I can get the bottle open. I like inks for this kind of stuff. They're strong, but they're also transparent, so they're not going to just immediately cover everything. We're going to have a lot of um, kind of working time, and I'm going to add a little bit of um, retarder to them to make sure that um, they stay fluid enough for me to like do um, feathering and stuff like that, right? Let's see, like right in here, I want a stronger shadow, but I don't want it quite like that. I did that in there, and then we're just gonna feather out the edge a little bit, like that. So we immediately got that. That's probably a little too strong. It's okay though, we can work with that. This means we need to thin our ink a little bit more. Just gonna add some of these in manually and then See how it goes with the airbrush afterwards. Okay. 
Conditioning clay. What kind of clay? There's lots of different clays out there. So one of the things you're going to want to do is learn how to feather. So feather means like if I take this right here, let's say I, I put it up under here because we want this to look like it's in shadow right, but now we've got that nasty hard line. We take a wet brush and we just take that edge and we just kind of work it away. So now we still have that shadow. But it's no longer a hard edge. We're working with Burnt Umber right now. I think I saw somebody mention Wrath of Kings. Is that what I just saw? Wolfen like fig. Interesting. One of the Kickstarters I'm working with, I got to help kind of pick out some wolf like poses for the um the uh sword I'm looking for. Werewolf that, that's part of the Kickstarter. So that was fun. Super super sculpy. It's also super crappy dry. Yeah. I I kinda hate working with super sculpy. It's just like a nightmare to need, I feel like. Like I never like work with Super Sculpey and I'm like, that was easy. Like there are people out there that that like love Super Sculpey. I am just not one of them. Yes, that's very true. That's very true. If you got a pasta roller, it will like if you do enough the 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 getting a pasta roller makes any sort of sense, like Save your hands and use a pasta roller. Yep, that's very, very true. How are we liking the horse, guys? Is it looking okay? It's still a bit rough because we haven't done the thing, but is it looking horse-like? Is it like... Like that just totally sucks. <laughs> Yeah, I used to do a lot of rock climbing. I love rock climbing. Like, rock climbing is so much fun. I, um... I was never good at it. <laughs> don't, uh, don't let me fool you there. <laughs> Alright. I think at this point, we're gonna go ahead and... We're gonna do, uh, top... Top rope. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and do the... Um, I think I need a little more down here, actually. I was going to say we're going to go ahead and do, but I don't like... This feels... Um, yeah, I was going to say we're going to go ahead and do the glaze, but I don't know. Not quite. I said worst case is none of this works out like I want and I just do something else I think we're in the right direction though like I think it'll I think it'll end up there we'll probably have to to do a little bit of, of stuff after we do the and honestly until we get the hair on there and the, the rest of it is not going to look right anyways. Oh, okay. Mm hmm Yup. Okay. Okay. We're going to go ahead and do this transparent burnt umber now. I'm going to mix this up in another cup so I get a really good idea of exactly how thin it is. We want it pretty thin. 
we we would much rather do multiple layers of um of passes than than yeah so we're probably 10% ink i would have to guess right that's that's where we're at did i clean this out earlier Whew, okay i was going to say like man if i left that brush in there all right so that's where we're at. We're probably gonna be. We're probably gonna add a little bit more. This should be almost like not noticeable. Is the idea? I think that'll be fine. Okay. We're gonna use the. Um, we're gonna use this brush for this because I have. I feel like I have a lot of control with this one. We're going to be way down on our air pressure because we are really thin paint. And again, we're only using little tiny squirts. Like, an airbrush is not a spray can. Like, don't treat it like... Yeah, that's how we want. So we're just... Don't treat it like it's... um. Like a spray can and just hold it down right so be controlled don't stay in one area too long if you stay in one area too long you will immediately regret it no matter how thin you are or how controlled you are you will start to spider yeah I think he's getting there I think that okay I think that blaze is doing what I want it to do we're suddenly very much looking horse-like. Look at that. This is just a real thin transparent sienna. We are looking horse-like. Now we kind of, kind of, kind of decide where we want to add in some extra. Is there any place that we feel like really just needs a boost? The shadows can always use more color, so we're going to come straight under and really saturate the shadows because that's what will give it that that feel right all right brutes monkey thanks for hanging out i'm happy with this so far i think it feels horse-like yeah All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to add in a little bit of our dark here. And we're going to hit it with some stronger shadows from underneath. I'm trying to think if we want to add any color in there. All right, I've added a little bit of burnt umber, which is much darker in the airbrush. And we're going to just, we're only going to focus on the shadows here. All right. This is a much darker color, but it's still transparent, so we shouldn't get... We shouldn't get too much bad stuff happening. <laughs> hey man, how's it going?
All right, I think we're getting close to the point we need to start thinking about the, the socks and stuff, right? I'm liking it. Does anybody have any strong feelings one way or the other? Do we like it? Do we hate it? Ah! Okay. I think we're gonna probably be good with that for the moment. I can always come back to it. All right? Let's go ahead and get, um, I need a picture of this, all the, what was it, the socks and the stuff. Um, black parts on a bay, which is what are called sock, are called points. So black legs, nose, ears, tail, and mane. Okay. Let's try to find a better picture of a horse. That's like we want. So this will help. <laughs> Leave this up and kind of get an idea from it. Doop, doop, doop. All right, so got black, 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 black. So we're going to use a little black ink and kind of try to work with that now. Black legs up just past the knees, black snout, and then we'll go ahead and base coat the black for the um, the mane and the tail and stuff. And it looks like a little bit of black on the ears, maybe. Just the tips. So let's kind of do that and then we'll see where we go from there. So we're going to use the black ink because it airbrushes so well, doesn't clog very easily, and it'll blend into what we've already kind of done. And we'll just see how it goes. If you've never used inks, I encourage you to give them a try. Just artist inks. They're a little, they're a little bit like transparents, if you used transparents before. Um, they're just a little different. All right, we've just got some black ink in there. Technically, we can use it unthinned. We're going to thin it a little bit just so that it's not quite so strong. All right. We need to turn our air pressure up just a little bit. This is apparently a little thicker. Interesting. I've never heard of that before. Good to know. Some good information there. So, instantly that helped a lot with our kind of looking like a horse. It's a... Uh, 
And then, of course, we'll highlight all that too, right? All right, let's go ahead and do the... The nice thing with doing texture for a piece like we've done too is it's much easier if something gets off, like if we accidentally hit airbrush. <laughs> Good night, man. Thanks for hanging out. If something gets off and we just totally touch something that we don't mean to touch, it's a hundred times easier to fix. Um, than if the the area was just super super smooth right if you just have a hyper smooth area and something is off you're just kind of screwed if you touch it like you may have to redo a huge chunk of the area I think it's looking horsey it's looking very horse like All right, since we've got black in the airbrush already, we're gonna go ahead. Yeah, we got too much black on his on his hindquarters, I think, but that's not a big deal. We can handle that later. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just add some white. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, I think, do I want white? I don't really want white is the thing. I want like an off-white. And let's let's go ahead and do like a warm gray. We're gonna add like one single tiny drop in here, maybe not even a full drop, because it'll just instantly tint our black. And then what we'll do is we'll see how that air brushes. That did not have as much of an impact as I expected, so we're gonna add a little bit more. Let me see if that did anything actually. Still looks really black. We're gonna all right, we're gonna add more. Apparently this is a really saturated black. <laughs> okay, that must be a bot of some kind, right? Yay. I've got my first bot, like I feel like that's a, it's a rite of passage or something, right? Like, <laughs> hmm. All right, this should be at least somewhat gray here. And we're just gonna, yeah, there we go. We're a little gray. When you're doing hair and stuff like that, you really wanna treat until you get down to the very end, you really wanna treat it like it's one one set of things like you don't want to try to highlight individual hairs right like if you try to highlight individual hairs it's not gonna go well at all can I just get rid of that message somehow probably I just don't know how to oh well All right, we're just taking some gray. And just highlighting the tops of things a little bit. Just giving it just a little bit of 
Bye. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. I think overall I'm liking how we've went there. I'm gonna need to fix this area right there. I thought I was a little more careful with the airbrush there, but that's okay. <laughs> I think we're probably done airbrushing for the moment here. <laughs> I think what we need to do, unfortunately, airbrush coats tend to be rather fragile until they're fully cured. So we probably need to let him kind of cure for a day or so with as much airbrushing as we've done because I really don't want to mess any of that up and then come back in and think about um, kind of stippling in some texture on the mane and, and how to highlight the hair and the mane and the hooves and all of that good stuff. And, but unfortunately, I think that means that the stream's probably going to end soon. Just cleaning out the airbrush here. Let's go ahead and see if I can't fix this. A few places are really going to bother me. So right along there is really going to bother me. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take some of our, our stuff and we're going to try stippling it in here. And then... Because what we want to do here, yeah. right? There we go. See, if that had been a crazy smooth blend, we would have been crazy in trouble. But since we've been adding texture, there really wasn't anything to fix that. And then this down here I feel like is, is not a good transition on his legs. So we're going to... Stipple those. Right. We're just making that transition just a little softer. A little more natural in the way that it looks. We can always come back in and stipple in a few highlights and stuff too. We're going to go ahead, since we're doing this, and fix this down here. I'm being real gentle though. I think as soon as we fix these areas, we'll probably call it a night. I feel like we made good progress on this. Like, I'm happy with the way it's looking. I feel like it looks horsish. Right? We've got kind of the rich colors that we need and the um, combination of both texture and um, smoothness. Right? I think we're good. Not in love with the black parts, but 
it's like I look at the picture of the horse and it looks one way and I think, I don't know, I think I need to, to work on the black. I think it's too gray right now as part of it. I'm going to come back in and hit it with some black and I think it'll be okay then. I'm just kind of touching up a few places that I want to soften up a little bit. These makeup brushes are great for doing that kind of work. Or, sorry, this is actually a Rosemary & Co. smush brush, which is like a makeup brush, but not quite, but very, very close. Think of it like a, like a high-end makeup brush. <laughs> All righty. I guess while I'm thinking about it, why don't I go ahead and fix the black parts? Let's grab some of our ink here. Do I want to do it in ink? Ink is good. Yep. And we're going to focus on reinforcing all the shadow parts with black. Oh no. One of my. Oh good, the lid was on. One of my inks tipped over and I was afraid the lid was... Okay, sure. Dark brown to highlight black, sure. There's a lot of different ways you can kind of highlight black. It just depends on the look you're going for. Doing like this, dark brown might be a good choice. Um, you know, if we want to see how that looks, what we can actually do is take um, something like this and it's a transparent color. So we can go over the black parts with this and it'll kind of tint them a little bit brown. There's a lot of different ways um, to kind of highlight black or to, yeah, to highlight black. Um, it just depends on the overall tone that you're looking for, right? I, that needs more shading there in general. The thing to remember with black in general though is it starts to to lose the feeling of black when too much of it becomes a highlight color. So a lot of things, you know, you think about blue and other other things, they get to be blue pretty much the entire time like nobody ever looks at something that was highlighted in light blue and says that's that's not blue that's you know purple no 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 it's it's blue we we all know it's blue the difference is black and a few other colors like red don't become simply their own color when you start shading them up they become different colors <laughs> or visually we perceive them as different colors Oh, sweet. Well, as a model horse hobbyist, am I, like, doing terrible things? Are we, are we like, in the realm of, like, what the hell is he doing yet? I think that's an ear. Nope, that's the ear, sorry. Yep, blue is good, yep. Yep. Blue and, and, and purple tends to make good, good highlight colors for black. I may try throwing some, uh, some brown in there. We'll have to see. Brown sounds good. <laughs> well, feel free to share any of your work. I'd love to see... I'd love to see what you've done. I'm well aware that painting horses in general is kind of a whole other thing because you're trying to get, you know, something that's fairly natural and, you know, visually everybody's seen enough picture of horses that we kind of know what a horse looks like, right? We're not going to get to cheat and say it's something else. Hmm. We can try throwing a little dark brown on. So that's some of the highlight of dark brown. I think that. 
Yeah, I think we can work with that. I know a lot of people paint horses and oils, right? I think that's popular. Right? They don't have to be realistic at all. Exactly. Like, you can do whatever the heck you want. Well, I've been to uh, the Atlanta Model Show, and one thing about the Atlanta Model Show, the Atlanta Figure Show, rather, is a lot of it is um, historic painters. Um, like, you know, like historic, um, like military figure painters. So there's tons and tons of horses there. So, unfortunately, I did not have the hindsight to, like, look at them last time I was there and really study them. Overall, though, I'm liking this. Like, I really just wasn't sure at all how it was going to go with the technique that I was doing. But honestly, I, like, I think it looks... I'm pretty happy with it. For having never painted a horse before. Yeah. All right. We're going to put some of that back there, and then we're just going to fade it off into here. The interesting thing is we may actually throw a little bit of dark blue in the shadows because uh, dark blue actually looks deeper than black blacker than black wait a minute um yeah uh, appreciate it so um i think i'm about to call it a night anyways so um yeah thanks for stopping by especially uh being a being a horse guy so yeah thanks I think I'm going to sign off now. If anybody has any questions, feel free to to stop in or to uh, to ask. Mm -hmm. We ought to figure out somebody to raise. Anybody have somebody they want to raid? If anybody has somebody that they would like to raid, I'd be more than happy to raid somebody. This headset's definitely more more comfortable. If you're just joining us and you're looking at this horse, you ought to watch. We did this horse in the last hour and a half, plus some significant breaks for other stuff. Um, and we really talk about how we got the, the texture and the smooth blends. And again, it was nothing magic. Like, it, it really was honestly very easy. And I feel like it looks looks halfway decent for the amount of work that we got into it. Let's go see if there's anybody worth raiding. Um, impending Duff and Useless Wizard are the ones that I am following. Anybody else? Ooh, Metalhead. Oh, uh, well, okay. I, I was not aware that she is on. So we are going to throw some... Oh, nope, she's already hosting somebody else. Ah, that's funny. I need to follow her, though. Um, let's, uh... I guess we can throw it over to Duff. Alright guys, we are going to go raid some impending duff. Um, he is a great painter. He does a lot of cool stuff. It looks like he's working on maybe a reaper figure? I don't know. Um, but we're going to go raid Mr. Duff here. How long have we got? Eight, six, five, four... Three, 
two, one, and we're raiding. It's a raid.